the sixth day of the sixth month, 06. Can we cope with the ghost that forced a family to flee their own home? Do something. <laughs> This week, I've brought you to Brighton. Now, being most haunted, we've not just come here for the ice cream and seaside rock. We've come to investigate the very haunted Preston Manor. This is a house with a long line of history. First mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086, it has since undergone several rebuilds and modifications, but retains one important documented fact. A ghost has been seen here for over 500 years. Many families lived here before the manor opened to the viewing public in 1933. Yet staff and visitors have always been convinced that a nun called Sister Agnes remains in residence and we are here to prove if this is fact or fiction. Now, bearing all this in mind, Preston Manor truly is a very scary place. But was it too scary for Kath and Carl when they spent last night alone and in the dark. How do you actually feel, Kath? Um. I just thought I heard a noise from up here. I heard it. Mm. What? What? What's what? That? what? 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 I've just seen a white shadow there. A, Where? White, a white here. A white shadow? It, yeah. What the f was that? Over there. The door was open. You what? <laughs> I can't move. I can't Go move. On, it? <sighs> what? What was the f was that? There's somebody out there. If you're there, come in the room. I don't think I can take much more of this at all. F***ing hell. Oh shit, someone's walking towards this door. Oh, f*** that. No way. Oh shit. He's there. Who's there? No way. That's something. That's got to be somewhere. Hang on, hang on. Don't go too... Don't go fast, cos we... Before. Oh, oh shit! Oh. What? 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 And on a second viewing of their footage, had this distraught duo really just walked past a possible apparition? That's got to be somewhere. Hang on, hang on. Don't go to. Don't go fast. They may have survived to see another day, but how will Carl and Kath's nerves cope when faced with a full 24-hour investigation inside Preston Manor's many haunted rooms? One frightening phantom that's seen all over Preston Manor is that of Sister Agnes, who is blamed for so much paranormal activity. From unpleasant atmospheres and potent smells to strange noises and full apparitions. <sighs> 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 
She was a nun and was brutally murdered by an unknown assailant. And her body wasn't discovered until 400 years after her death. Her remains were discovered right underneath where I'm standing, but the manor isn't the only place that Agnes haunts. She is said to roam the graveyard looking for a proper burial. Um, there have been various families that have lived here over the years, but probably the most famous, the people that have lived here the longest, have been the Stanford family. They actually lived in the house for over 138 years, which is quite a long time for one family. We've got letters from the family. We've got scripts that they wrote down all about this ghost. Um, she used to appear every six weeks to people in the house, a pop up everywhere. She'd be in this room here. She'd be in the corridors outside. She would be upstairs. She'd be in the churchyard. She'd be in the garden. She, she would appear everywhere. We have a back staircase that goes down to the kitchens from the maid's room. And every time you go up and down this staircase, you can hear another set of footsteps coming behind you there is definitely something following you down. This is a servant's basement and is a very scary place to be. Many people who visit here feel uneasy for no apparent reason. The servant bells often ring, even though all but one has had their wires dismantled. But the most common sight is that of a nun. Children playing in the corridors have actually seen her and spoken to her. She's a solid apparition. When approached, simply disappears. Could she be the ghost of Agnes or simply another lost, desperate soul? A lady dressed in grey has been seen coming through this cabinet. It used to be a doorway into another room. She's also been seen walking up and down these stairs and across the landing, but never acknowledging anyone. To increase the intrigue, when the clock strikes midnight tonight, we will have reached the sixth day of the sixth month in the year ending 06. Now, parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe is a well-known sceptic of anything attributed to supernatural existence. So what are his views on a date supposedly linked to the number of the beast? Now, we've not just got the manor as well. Things have been seen and heard here in the graveyard, and also the church were able to, to enter that this evening as well. So we're going to be all over the place, aren't we? It's going to be great. The, the thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is in terms of the investigative team are they going to let suggestion uh, play on their minds? Because a graveyard and a church, it automatically has associations with it. It almost automatically has spooky sensations, spooky environment, and there are stories here, and I'm just concerned about that area. The Preston Manor itself, at least the upper floors, they don't necessarily feel spooky. Um, so I'm hoping that we get some phenomena in the upper floors rather than elsewhere. Is there anything that concerns you about the surrounding area? Given that we're very close to a main road and also the perimeter of the manor kind of backs on to a public park and also next to the graveyard we've got a football pitch which have lots of electrical lightings, there's a number of environmental things that I think we need to look out for. The main road, if there's heavy traffic, especially large lorries, they could cause a vibration, also cause infrasound. In addition, we're going to get a lot of extraneous noise and people may misinterpret that as being, you know, as the result of a spirit talking or uh, audible phenomena. In addition, with the electricity next to the graveyard and very high levels of EMF, that may be the thing that's responsible for some of the experiences in the graveyard. Now, tonight, the actual date is quite significant. Midnight, it becomes 6 of the 6th, 06. That, I think, for me, is quite exciting the connotations that sort of surrounding those numbers what do you think 
at the end of the day, we are essentially a paranormal investigation team. There's a lot culturally about these three numbers, 666, being the mark of the beast, the devil in essence. So why not at midnight, let's set something up and see what happens. And time will tell if these are just numbers or if the devil will reside with us tonight. And can mediums David Wells and Ian Shillito offer us any forewarning of the dangers that exist at Preston Manor? Something nasty in the woodwork in this room. I think he's really frustrated. A bit and grumpy. I'm very grumpy, yeah. a bit cantankerous. It has a devilish face to it. Really? Yeah, it, it's <gasps> almost horned. I'm finding it quite difficult to breathe. It's almost like a coffin went. <laughs> of history is packed into this 400-year-old home in Brighton. But is Preston Manor really as peaceful and unassuming as it appears to passers-by? With both mediums David Wells and guest psychic Ian Shillito ready to offer us their insight into this property, we were ready to begin along the lavishly furnished ground floor. I don't like this room. I want to, I want to come in it because I don't like it. There's a couple of things in my ears. One is a wailer, you know, a wailing woman. But I also feel there's something that's shifting around and, and kind of scaring me. Oh. Okay. It feels active, like there's a ball of energy in the room. It feels like there's a spiritual activity. So it feels to me like there's a huge... Can you hear it? Yes. I heard that. It didn't sound like it came from him here. No. See, so here we go again, when he just That's started. The there is powerful energy in here, and I'm starting to get really hot. Um, and, and... I just moved my weight. No, it was a... No, it was a bang. Where, where do you think it's coming from? It's either out, it's out there, or it's it's really soft coming in the walls. There's nobody out there though, is there? No. If there's any spirits in the room, anyone wants to talk to us, could you please make your presence known by tapping twice the yes? Months for no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's twice. twice. Just tap me again. OK. She seems to... It's a woman, definitely. She seems to have been either stabbed I obviously am sensing things here, but she feels more outside to me. Um, she's being drawn towards me. I think she's a nun. Are you a nun? Can you tap for me four times if you're a nun? Come on, Kieran. Come on. What is your, that? You're looking at everyone's feet. Yeah, I'm trying. Where is it coming from? Can you, can you get any sense of... It's this side of the room. Yeah, that's, yeah I, that's what I feel too. I'm just interested. I'm just going to stand it outside. Yeah. Don't you think that is odd? Yeah, I think it's very odd. I'll come very outside odd. with you, actually. So it's a nun? Yeah. Um, she's, she's pulling me. She's pulling me and an arc. She's going like that, like an arc. Oh, right. I think the reason she's doing that kind of shape is the place is different. It's not... This isn't it. This isn't her home. I was going to say, what's a nun doing in a manor house? It's not. It doesn't feel like a manor house. It, it feels much more so people will come for help. That's very strong, wasn't it? Yeah, it's very strong. Okay. It seems like it's actually coming from this wall. Right. Really. She seems... She actually seems very honest, and you know how sometimes when we get this, if they're haunting, it's because they don't go to the light because they feel they'll be judged and they'll be condemned to help. There's not that with her. It's just no. constant tapping while you were saying that. She, she's not that isn't the problem with her. Well, that's enough for us to start with. There's loads of information there. Straight through, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? I think so. So where does this... this... 
non-pawned. Is she just specifically in that room, or do you feel she's everywhere? I think she's everywhere. She seems... I can smell lavender. Oh, yeah. Did it smell this strong before? No, very strong. It is yeah. very strong, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Who is this? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just aware of her moving. She's being very dramatic about it all. She's... What? Go Sorry, on. Sorry, no, that's just my shoulder. Maybe she was hit here. I've got one of those stabbing pains. I'll tell you what, what she did. She, she ran from here. So she came right in. She came right up to this window. She went through the window. And then she popped back up in a coffin like this. You saw that? Yeah. And that's what she did. She went right through the window. And she, and she almost like a coffin went... Like this. Mean? What, what does that mean? Well, she's obviously out there buried, I would say. So she, you think out here... I can't get through there because it's padlocked now. But out here... It's where they shoved her. She's given me images of a hasty grave. Do you think her body is there now? I, I have no sense of it there now. Because I can feel... I can feel her moving still. When I'm asking the question in my head, she's moving. She's moving over towards the graveyard. She's she shown me um, a consecration of the, of the body and her cross, so that, but basically saying she never... She was never given a proper burial. OK, which way? This, this way? way yeah. yeah. So much of the information that David had given did relate to past experience, yet one crucial detail had so far remained absent, a name for this nun. You know, there, there's, it's either Alice or Agnes. There's two names. All right. It's either the... Alice or Agnes. Yeah. So, Sister Alice, Sister Agnes. Yeah. And her body, mm. you know when you said that it was underneath where we were? And it was moved. When do you think that would have happened? I think it was Victorian. And I think she made her presence felt so strongly to the people in this house that they had to do something about it. I would think if you lived here on a day-to-day -day basis, and you had anything about you that was slightly spiritual, and bearing in mind the era, the Victorians, mm -hmm. hugely interested in it. Mm. If they had a seance or a spirit cabinet or, a, or something like that, they would have contacted her. She would have used that opportunity to make herself known. And when you say they contacted her, and you're, are, you, are you picking up the fact that it's in this room or is it in another, another room? It's not in this room. There is something, something nasty in the woodwork in this room. What sort of thing is nasty in here? One of these... <laughs> One of those jobs, you know? One of those eyes and teeth um, that I like to a call A male them. energy? Hard to tell, because it has, for one of another word, something I, I firmly want to say do not believe in, it has a devilish face to it. Really? Yeah, it, it's <gasps> almost horned. It feels, it feels that gross. Well, you know what we're going to do tonight, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, because midnight is going to be 6606. Six, of course. But my natural instinct, which I should follow, takes me beyond that. It takes me to... I hate to say it, but it does take me back. It takes me to monks. Right. So there's one monk here that's... But he's, like, he's real nasty, real... It might be. I don't know if he's tied to the, to the nun, whether he murdered her. Is he in the room now, this he, monk? He seems stuck there in that corner, and I can't think of why. I, I, I'm really strongly convinced that on this ground was something, in his time, completely different. Research soon revealed that David was correct in his judgment of a seance in Victorian times, which did indeed take place directly below us in the Cleves room that had earlier seemed so audibly responsive. Come on, Kieran. And with David sensing so much of the phenomena that is associated with the manor's many rooms, it was time for guest medium Ian Shillito to also join us and open his mind to any other astrals who may exist here. I've been given two major things. I've been given a, a, a rather large, portly gentleman. Two women, a little bit more recent, uh, could be sisters, but very pally together. Uh -huh. Life's a bit of a laugh. Yeah. Knows we're here. Um, the, the man, very specifically, was um, an owner. He was portly. He suffered a lot from aches and pains. And I feel it's something that um, we're going to feel. I certainly feel it. 
I'm going to try and get a date for you. The only area I can pin it down to at the moment is the 1500, so that's 16, 16 okay. something. All right. Um, Any name with him? Francis was the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. Okay, and like I said, like I've always said before, when you sometimes when you even before you finish that question, yeah, a name will be given into, to me yeah. straight away. So um, I'm going to go with that okay. for the time being. All right. Okay. A green dress is very significant here. They're telling me about a green dress. Okay, I think it's the two girls. I think the two ladies. Um, let's try and explain what they're wearing. Is the dresses are quite high waisted, so the waists yeah. are not here. They're not the fitted corset waists as Victorian. Yes, no, so it's quite busty like here, and then it's kind sense of sense and sensibility style, yeah. I suppose. Whatever year, era that was. But there's, I don't know why they're. I don't know why they're two sisters here at the moment. I, they're certainly not grounded. I think. These two girls are up for a bit of a laugh. Oh, right, well, that's good. We like a bit of a laugh. Yeah, yeah. So can I go yeah, on and course. just see if there's yeah, anything absolutely. else? Because I'm quite interested to see. Yeah. Now, the energy in here, I'm finding it quite difficult to breathe mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, there's two things. There's a fire. Mm -hmm. And it's also the old man associated with the old man. As a person, he's quite gruff, actually. He's a bit sort of like, you know, slamming stuff down and, and a bit very frustrated that he's not very well. I don't think it's anything nasty, yeah. but I think he's really frustrated. A bit and grumpy. I, very grumpy, yeah. a bit cantankerous. Yeah. And, and now I'm being said he actually has a bit of a... Oh, to the servants. Uh, but there's also this sort of fire thing going on as well. It's the, it's the when outer... When would a fire would it happen? When, when do you pick that up? Uh, it's the 17th century. OK. Um, Was it a big it's, it's, fire or just in this particular area here? I think it was quite a big fire. I mean, I don't think it burnt it to the ground. Yeah. So it now appears that more than one astral may reside within the walls of Preston Manor. But what of the graveyard that lies next door? With midnight fast approaching, which part of this beautiful abode would choose to turn on us first? It's the sixth day of the sixth month. Oh, sixth. Do something. <laughs> Preston Manor in Brighton has something that few other haunted properties can boast. Records show that it is now more than 500 years since a ghost was first seen here, and evidence so far suggests we may have made contact with this apparition, a murdered nun whose body was dumped in drains under this terrace, and who now refuses to leave. Oh my Sister Agnes lay undiscovered until 1897 and was, quite rightly, given a proper resting place in a graveyard adjacent to the house. Just the place, it seems, for Kieran, Stuart, both Ian's and John Dibley to conduct a night vision vigil. And with the clock ticking down, the final few minutes to the sixth day of the sixth month in the sixth year, I'd soon be ready to join David, Carl, Kath and John Gilbert to see if evil really does exist on such a date. What's the time? How long we got? Time check. Well, oh, you hear that? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I might just pop there's over there. there. Can you see anything? Well, there's nobody there in the thermal imager. Right. Otherwise they'd show up. Well, animals show up on that. Yes, it's because yeah. they're here. We know what the f was that? What? Rustling from over there. Which don't... Over here, over here. Come, here. come around here, come around here. It was over there. Oh, where do we go? Where do you want to go first, David? Mm. Should we go in the end room? 
Yeah. I don't like that. I, I tell you what, I don't like the sound of this. These doors bloody closing on you. Oh. 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 Hell! <laughs> oh, you are joking. I just said that. I know. Don't say anything like that ever again. <laughs> you were right behind me when that shot. <laughs> Holy moly! Where are you, Kath? Are you there? <laughs> Oh, We've only been going for one, one minute and 43 seconds. Well, that happened last night to, to Kath and myself upstairs. <gasps> really? I didn't want to come back. Right, come on then, let's keep going. Strong, that door was unbelievable, wasn't it? What? Make yourself known. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. It's now midnight. It's the sixth day of the sixth month. Oh, sixth. The sixth year. In the second millennium. And so some people would say that 666 association mark of the beast of the devil although myself as a skeptic question the numerological basis of that given that it's 2006 but Sorry, still your face has changed your face has changed oh, gosh. <sighs> i didn't know who the hell that was then standing there You're, you just completely you completely um cool. and even still now <sighs> do something Oh, did you hear that? Are we in any danger? That was right Jeez. here. Okay. Can you make the knocks louder, please? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? Someone what? just touched my head. No, something physically touched <laughs> Calm down, calm down. What? Shh, calm. They just whacked my head. Oh, I I, what was that noise? Here. Got an orb going right past your shoulder. What was that noise? Was that one of us? That was one of Kath, us. Was that you? No, I didn't. What? What noise? They just whacked my head. Oh, I I, what was that noise? They just whacked my head. Oh, I I, what was that noise? Got an orb going right past your shoulder. Like I want to get out of this room, please. Come on. What room is this? I can't even... Oh, so, that's oh, not wait, staircase. I don't want to go back up there again. Oh, it's just too warm. Torch, you don't want to work that one. Are you all right, David? It's like it's whacked my head. Oh! oh. Shit! Wow. There is, is... Is there anyone else up here? No. no. I swear to you, so I, I heard somebody, it was like somebody sitting down very heavily. Come on, let's keep together. Come on. Oh! What the f was that? Hell! <laughs> 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 what? What? Calm down. Let's get upstairs. Let's get up the stairs. <laughs> Did you just grab all of my back? No! Oh. oh, I don't like it up here. Oh. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Oh, shh. To the right, to the right, to the right, to the no, right. No, that was up the stairs. <laughs> Where? You, you didn't give up hold of my, my bell and pulled me back. No! There's that noise again. It's talking. We heard a man's groan as we came up the stairs and mm. I can still hear Tom, like, mumbling. Yeah, yeah. It's that room. That's, that's where it's all coming from. Although the graveyard hadn't proved as frightening as we'd all first thought, we hadn't even needed to wait until midnight for things to warm up inside. With light anomalies, responsive tapping and the sudden slamming of a door, all possibly providing early evidence. And with Kath feeling a tug on her back, we head into the source of the noise to hold a seance in the library. the 
about later. Yeah? Yeah. Doorbell, though. That'll be them trying to come in from the graveyard. <sighs> well, if you're here, whatever your name is, do something else. I don't mean you any disrespect, but you do not... If you are here to scare me, you are not scaring me. Is there somebody out there in the landing? They're letting them in the door. It could be somebody letting them in the door. Oh, that table is moving. The table is moving, it's vibrating now. This doesn't feel right, this is not like it normally is, I feel. No, it's not. I, I, do you know, I, I, it's I'm, something... I don't want him to show us that he wants to leave, I just want to leave. I'm really not enjoying it. I don't feel safe at all. At all. David? I agree with you. There's something different about this one. He's clever. I don't like the fact that he's playing on our fears. And he's been all over me. He's been absolutely all over me. I've had to fight him off. And he's a, a nasty git. He's going to behave nastily. But and it's because he's nasty he can do more. Oh, shite. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, just put his hand right on my back. A hand, right, a hand, right on my back. Oh, oh. Sorry, breath right by me. Like, oh, okay. oh. It's frightening people what you do, especially women and children. Is that what you do? Do you think it's funny? At the door, there was a there was a woman. There was a there was a shape of a woman. She was in white, and she just looked, and she was doing that. No. Ooh. But outside the room, outside the room, she looked, and it. With the ghosts of Preston Manor's past seemingly happy to respond to our appeals, we felt that each vigil was providing further proof that this is a haunted house. But with a few more hours till sunrise, what else would happen as we continue to walk these dark and deeply disturbing rooms? is a 17th century manor house that may well be haunted by remnants of a religious holding that dates back far further. The full apparition of a nun was first seen at Preston Manor several centuries ago, but was she murdered? And was her killer a monk? Two more simultaneous vigils hope to find out more. So with guest psychic Ian Shilito joining Kieran, Ian, Stuart and John Dibley in the former bedroom where a disembodied hand scared sleeping guests, David Wells, Carl, Kath, John Gilbert and I all head down to the cellar where no one feels safe. Can you feel anything around, David? I can feel lots of things around. Really? This is me. I can feel just lots of noise. You're right, John. You're right, Kath. That's my hands, sorry. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, f***. What happened? I don't know. Ooh, there's a piece, there's a piece of wood on the floor here. What's that? It's about What's three foot long. Oh, that's me on here. What's the yes, the piece of wood scared. has come from somewhere. It's not fallen off a door, it's not fallen off anything. It's actually been thrown. Oh, come on. She's madness, pure madness. Oh, my God, I'm not liking this. What was that? What was that? 
I don't know, I didn't hear anything. What, what, I didn't hear like anything. Like a bang. Yeah. You make the noise again. <sighs> Can you I hear anything? that. She said go into the little room at the end. <clears throat> this is not in a room, is it? Oh, hang on a minute. I think this is a blocked up tunnel. Oh, so they would have used the sun to go somewhere. Yeah. Can someone say my name then? No. no. Come on. <laughs> I never said your no, name. No, honestly, why would I say your name? Can someone say my name then? Can someone say my name then? Who was it? Speak to me again if you want to speak to me. If you know my name. Could, what kind of voice was it, John? Was it male, female? It was a whispery voice. It's right. difficult to tell when it's... Okay. when it's whispery. <laughs> Are you cold? There's a breeze down there, is it me? I felt a breeze earlier on, literally oh, about cold. 30 seconds ago when I was standing here. But I don't know if there's any windows open. There's some windows there. Ah, <sighs> uh, they'll be closed then. Yes. Sorry, John. Right, sorry. Wait, where's the, where's the door shut? That door just started to shut. No, Stuart did it. Not touched the door. Well, I just saw it shut after you. I've not, cl I've not closed that door. I saw, I saw it. I did see it behind, and Stuart's next to me. Yeah, so Stuart's here. I was stood next to the door, granted. Did you not touch it? No. But that was that was amazing, then. If that, yeah. if you didn't touch that, I was stood thing. here. I didn't close it. Well, then you knocked into my camera. Why well, knocked you with my camera? I was stood here, mm. and you turned round, and then we, mm. we knocked each camera? other. I didn't see the door close. I yeah. saw the door close. I'd love to see that back, actually. Yeah. 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 Check it back. See. Have a look. Stuart was adamant that he hadn't touched the door, and John's camera did seem to back this up, as he is clearly seen walking past and into the room. Was that you that closed the door? If there is anyone here, any spirits, could you please close the door again? I'm standing looking at it. If you are there, can you please close it for us? Please, if there's any spirit people here now, could you shut one of the doors behind us? Make a noise in the room? Make your presence known to us, please. Something just moved across that door. Quite low down though, not, not um, yeah, it would, it would a child head height. Some of the kids that run about. Like a footstep through there, or a bang. Please show us you're here. What was that? Was that the table? Put on the table, yeah. I had my fingers on it like that, but I've I didn't I've got all my weight on it. 
Awesome, yeah. Please show us you're here by doing something. Move this table. <gasps> no way. It sounded like a chair moved. It was, was it? it was the table, it just moved. It was the moved. table, it just table. moved. Should we sit round it or just stand? Sister Agnes, if you're here with us now. <gasps> Sister Agnes, is this you? Please move the table or make a noise so we know that you're here. Please. I'm calling to the spirit of Sister Agnes. What was that? That was the chair moving. I didn't touch it. I've not even been anywhere near it. I'm just there. Who was that chair moving? Where are your feet, Carl? You're not anywhere near it. Oh, you, you, I, you, I'm not moving. You can tell what <coughs> you see on this. Where are my feet, Carl? OK. You were murdered. We know that. Oh. You hear that? that? That was me moving my arm. No, 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 it did tap in the centre of the table. Yeah, it seemed to be coming from the table. What is that? It's like creaking of furniture. Yeah. <gasps> but nothing's moved. The chair, that chair moved. <coughs> that chair moved. Sister Agnes, if that was you that moved the chair, can you move it again? Are you here to protect people? Are you here to protect this house? We know you're a good woman. Oh, oh, <laughs> OK. What was that bang? What was that bang? That was near you, John. That was a bang definitely over there, wasn't it? So what horrors had our date with destiny really conjured? We'd all wonder just how devilish the sixth of the sixth of the six would prove to be, and several random pieces of phenomena may well hold our answer. Both Kath and David felt a physical force in their backs, either in or just outside the library, whilst John Gilbert was sure he'd recorded the sound of his own name down in the very creepy cellar, a claim that can be substantiated. Who, would someone say my name there? A long length of wood seemed to appear from nowhere and dropped behind us all as we entered the basement. And after two different types of door movement, a chair in the servants' quarter kitchen crashed to the floor in front of our very eyes. And of course, let's not forget the taps that had littered the earlier walk around and, at the time, even impressed our resident scientist. Preston Manor was an unusual location for the team to investigate. From the outside, was not your typical investigation. In one particular room on the ground floor during David Wells's walk around, we actually heard a tapping sound. Can you tap for me four times if you're a nun? Come on, Kieran. As a skeptical parapsychologist, we're always looking for intelligent communication, real verifiable answers to questions that David or another member of the team may ask. On this particular occasion, it appeared as though there was intelligent answers. Again, I have to put on my skeptical hat and say, well, there's a possibility that somebody else may have been causing the raps, that if you want to take a paranormal explanation, it may be some form of RSPK, which is recurrent spontaneous psychokinesis. But even if it was that, that would still be quite impressive. Carl had a very significant experience in one of the vigils during this investigation. What happened? <sighs> At the door, there was a there was a woman. There was a there was a shape of a woman. She was in white, and she just looked, and she was doing that. No. Ooh. But outside the room, outside the room, she looked. And it... In speaking to Carl after the experience, he immediately tried to rationalise it saying that he may have been in some sort of uh, hypnopompic state, that it may have been some sort of hallucination given the environment, given the suggestion of the seance and what people were saying in that particular room, 
and also be aware that Carl does have knowledge about the previous experiences in that particular location. So he is quite vulnerable to these experiences. That said, the experience was significant enough that he did get out of his chair, literally fall out of his chair, and hide behind Kath. We do have to take his account at face value. If there is a lesson to be learned from our time here, it's that some sins can never be forgiven or forgotten, even after its victim has finally been laid to rest. Sleep tight.